Okay. Um, today is Friday, November 17th, 2.05 p.m. Uh, I am in Largo, Florida. My sister Cheryl is in St. Petersburg. There was an incident with my external drive made by a famous computer company that just stopped working. And I had saved two videos on it, videos seven and eight. And unfortunately, they're not there. So we have to redo it. And the easiest way to do this is through a Zoom meeting. So this is why we have the split screen. Um, so today we're going to talk about my or our maternal grandparents, which are Jen and Jack Stabley, and our fraternal grandparents, George and Helen Beale. No, paternal. Maternal, yeah. Ah. Fraternal. Ah. Pater yeah, that's right. Paternal. <laughs> I know. Okay, so and, anyway. And the, and the Stavelys are the non-biological parents of Barbara Stavely. Well, let's just give out all the family secrets. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just try trying for accuracy here, Bubba. Yeah, well, guess what? We're not really real. Uh, no, no, not going to. We'll get to that later. Exactly. Okay. So tell me about um, <laughs> Nana and Jack. I call him Jack because he passed away when I was like three years old, so I never got to know him. Yeah. And it just seems weird. You know, Grandpa, whatever. What did you, what did you call him? Grampy. Grampy? <laughs> Grampy. Tell he me was, about Grampy. He was, he was my Grampy. Um, you know, when I think of him, it, there's two like things that come right forward and it's like this little video that plays in my head yeah. and, uh, they, they lived in Norwood, not but a couple of miles up the street from us. 24 um, Marl Road. Exactly. And there is a picture of that someplace. Yeah. Um, So they had this little ranch house, uh, and it had a, a basement. So I don't know, you know, whoever's watching this, some states you can have a basement. Some places like Florida, you don't have a basement. Otherwise, you have a swimming pool in your basement. Um, so I just remember going down the stairs to the cellar, and um, it was always very neat and tidy. And Grandpa had his, his – uh, um, drafting board there because he was a civil engineer and he he liked to uh, design things so i can remember you know diddly bopping down the stairs and he would be sitting at his desk and i would just say grampy and he would get the biggest smile on his face <laughs> because he was my buddy he was he was my best friend in the whole wide world and until you know i was eight um and so you know invariably one of two things happened. If I was at their house, um, then, you know, uh, Grandpa would say, oh, I think we have to go get Nana some wine. <laughs> and, and and Jen, that's Nana, um, drank Mogan David wine, <laughs> which she served at her ladies' luncheon. Um, I think it was once a month. They, they took turns. So, yeah, they had to have their Mogan David wine. That was their – they were big drinkers, those girls. <laughs> was that Mrs. Um, Hogan, the one that lived right across the yard from her on the garage side? Because there was Lyon, there was Mr. Lyons, who was Lyons Heating and Air Conditioning. He was a plumber. Yeah, because yeah, that was they were to the right. Well, if you're facing the house, the Lyonses mm -hmm. were to the left, and then the yep. Barakis were the next house going towards um, whatever that street was, Bond Street. Yeah, uh, that that's the picture. That's the one where Daddy had the picture taken of him in the fifties on yeah. Easter. Yeah, yeah. And then um, to the right, there was a young couple there whose name I forget. Um, and then there there was another house up. Um, now, I'm, and then huh? I'm talking about the house. You're looking at their house in the drive. Yes. Right. Yes. And to the right, right next door in the garage side, I think her name was Hogan. And an interesting story. They were a young couple. Whoever yeah. lived right next to them, they were a young couple. And she was he was handsome, she was beautiful. But they but were the, much younger. 
Yeah, but I believe it was one of their grandfathers was on the Titanic as a seaman and survived. Yeah. And I remember hearing that no idea. somewhere. Yep. Don't know anything about that. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Okay, so um Grampy, we, we would uh he would take me for a ride. And <laughs> we'd go get the wine. Well, we got the wine at Balboni's package store. A package store is where you bought liquor in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, so you got your beer. It's also known as a packy. And um, <laughs> that was because you couldn't just walk out of the store. You had to put it in a package, like a shopping bag or something. Anyway, that's why we called it a packy. Um Going on a packy run. <laughs> yeah, going on a packy run. And we'd, um, you know, we'd walk in. And, of course, you know, we must have been doing it for years because everybody knew me. You know, um, they all greeted me. Like, you know, and, of course, Grandpa was just showing me off all the time. And, yeah, he just loved his trips with his granddaughter. <laughs> and uh, I love my trips with my grampy. And, then uh, yeah, so – um you know, they, they treated me like a little princess, yeah, which was a lovely thing. And then um, after we came out of Balboni's, then, you know, we might go downtown to South Norwood, um, which is more of the ethnic communities down there. So you had an Italian neighborhood, a Syrian neighborhood. Um, I'm trying to think. Italian, Syrians. Arab. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, I, I was, yeah. I'm, I was just trying to remember who, which group they belonged to, but I, for the life of me, I can't remember that. <laughs> I, have no, I have no brains. Um, but it was it was always wonderful. The Irish, however, lived uptown, uh, and and generally congregated close to the railroad tracks, and um, a lot of the the Irish folks that settled in in Norwood. Uh, lived on or near Main Street, which was Washington Street, yeah. and um, is it Manhattan? Is yeah, that well, actually, that was just outside of our neighborhood once you right. got past Oldham School. Right. Um, that was called Little Island, that whole area there. Well, there was a whole section right down, yeah. practically on the railroad tracks downtown, um, yeah. which was known as Cork. Yeah. Which I found interesting in later years it's like really hmm. so uh yeah that was uh so grandpa would yeah we just do the tour we go downtown <laughs> um if if he picked me up early on a saturday or a sunday yeah. then um we went to the bakery um it was a syrian bakery and oh my god we grandpa would <laughs> roll down you know he'd either say roll down the windows or i I think we, he may have had, and I think that was an Oldsmobile that he had, um, electric windows. And as we went under the bridge to go to <laughs> South Norwood, it was rolled down the window. All you could smell was fresh baked bread. It was like heaven. I remember like that heaven. car. Oh, my God. It was wonderful. Um, when, he, when he passed away, Daddy yeah. took the car or bought it, I guess. And we used that for a while because I remember getting my fingers caught in the window. Yep. When he put mm -hmm. the <laughs> using the electric controls. <laughs> yep. 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 I'm sorry. Don't, anyways, don't, don't um, put your feet. Don't put your hands <laughs> in the window. And of course, there's Billy. Hey, I was only like six or seven. Yeah. It made well, an impression on me. Yeah, um, little boys. Little boys. Yeah. Um, well. You had said that everybody knew Jack and Nolly. Why was oh, everybody that? know him? Why was that? Well, uh, Grampy was involved in like pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, there was some town politics because he knew everybody. Uh, he didn't run for office. Mm. He was he was one of those people that was on the periphery and would have the ear of people. He would support uh. people. Mm -hmm. um, I think he belonged. He was a Mason at one point. Really. And, well, yeah, which became a problem because he was Catholic. And, uh, <laughs> the Masons wanted to get rid of him? No. Um, the, the Catholics were very 
very anti-Freemasonry, which oh, as a yeah. matter of fact, I just read this morning that the Vatican came out and said that Catholics cannot be Freemasons, they'll be excommunicated. What, today in 2023? Yes, sir. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I just laughed. I'm like, yeah. Because they're so bad. Well, you we'll, know, get, we'll get into that later. <laughs> it's, it's, a, you know, it's always something. It's, it's all these crazy people. <laughs> so anyways, you know? he was pagan, well known. Pagan beliefs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. This is going to go well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know how I feel about that. <laughs> Um, they they still burn witches, Bill. They still burn witches. Hey, those were the pilgrims, okay? Those were we the did, no, Calvinists, no. actually. Calvinists. Yeah, well, they, um, you know, you may not see the flames, but they're doing it. So there you go. Anyway, all right. So that Grampy would take me on a tour of Darwin. And yeah. um, we'd run into people that he knew. And everybody was, oh, hey, Jack, how you doing? And uh, I, it, he was just such a lovely man. Um, he was kind, he was so smart and, um, yeah, people just absolutely loved Grimpy mm -hmm. and it seemed like the whole town of Noah knew him. And he was very friendly with Bishop Minahan, <laughs> who was the Bishop, Bishop of St. <laughs> Cat in our area. And yeah, uh, that, that's before the other one with the private plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That piece of crap. Uh, 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 Cheryl? Well, he was. He was. Yeah. He must Monse have decorum. Yeah. Even Monsignor Senate, Monsignor yeah. Senate, even though I'm in a t-shirt and, you know, you're comfortable, we must act our age and not use foul language. That wasn't foul. That was truth. Yeah, I know, but according to the Catholics. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> okay, anyways. Yeah, come at um, me. Come at me. Yeah. You, you, you know so, how I am. He was he was uh, good friends with Bishop Minahan. Yeah, yeah, very good friends with Bishop Minahan. Um, as a matter of fact, after we did first communion, yeah, um, you know, because the bishop was there to do the first communion, he gave first yeah. communion to our whatever group we were, and um, afterwards there was like this big thing in the parking lot behind St. Catherine's where yeah. the parents came to pick up their kids after the parade or whatever. Yeah. And I remember standing out back and holding, standing right next to Grandpa holding his hand and yeah. he would not let go of my hand. <laughs> I, th I think he thought I was going to be kidnapped or something in the crowd, but he yeah. did not let go of my hand. And of course I was kind of wanting, because mom and dad were there, yeah. but you know, Grandpa had a firm hold on my hand. And um, I remember, <laughs> I remember him saying I had to kiss Bishop Minahan's ring, which <laughs> ob obedient child that I was, yeah. I did. And then he gave me a blessing, and then you know the one on the head. Yeah. And then um, I remember Grandpa thanking him. I won't say profusely, yeah. but being very grateful for that. And. Yeah. Um, that was kind of a big thing. Obviously, made an impression. Yeah. To me, well, I think, so I think that actually, not you, you know, meeting the bishop, but the home movies have a first communion. Yeah. In it. Yeah. And you know, I don't know when Dad got the color movie camera, which I still have in the closet. Um. But uh, there's a bishop there with the miter and a shepherd's crook. So you might That's want to Bishop take... Minahan. Oh, that is him? Okay. That's Minahan, yeah. That's Minahan. <laughs> he was the only bishop that we had. Oh, okay. And that was for years. And then yeah. I, I don't know whether he passed away or what the deal was, but we ended up getting Monsignor Senate. Yeah. 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 You know how priests are supposed to have a vow of poverty. And yet, yeah. geez, he had a really fancy Lincoln Continental car, and he had a, um, his own airplane. No, they weren't his. They were his families that they let him use. Yeah. Because every priest needs one. I, Anyways, I, yeah. Back to Jacks. I didn't know he was that religious. Uh, he had converted. He was an Episcopalian. Really? Yep. And then. Um, well, that must have been before he married Nana. Or I think it was they, they were they were engaged. Yeah. Because they were married at uh, St. Patrick's. Yeah. Um, 
and I remember Aunt Anne, that would be Anne Everett, who was my godmother, um, mm -hmm. who was also one who converted to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. um, and she, too, was very um, pious yeah. insofar as the religion was concerned. So um, I know that when she, she was considering converting, she talked to, to Grampy. Oh, okay. the whole thing. So they kind yeah. of they had that in common, mm -hmm. and of course, Aunt Anne loved Grammy, loved him, yeah. um, and of course, you know the the Everett family. That would be Aunt Anne's husband, Uncle Uncle, Uncle um, Joe, Uncle Joe. The Everett family and um, the Gardella family. That's Jen's family. Yeah. You know, they they all grew up together in Natick. So oh, it's a, a very close very close circle so everybody well, knew everybody yeah including um, the beals yeah including i know the beals so um, yeah. the um okay so anyways grampy as you call him knew everybody and you would go on trips with our rides and stuff mm -hmm. um there are a couple of pictures where i don't think it's early morning but he's sitting at i can still remember the kitchen and the kitchen table that he was sitting at was the same one we had uh i i don't know maybe we kept it for about five more years after daddy died it was that same kitchen table he was in the kitchen sitting there where mom would sit when we'd have dinner having a cup of coffee okay mom, mom used to say oh he would just come driving down and yeah. and what would he do then when he came in yeah <laughs> He just, he just, he wanted just to spend time with his daughter and his grandkid. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'm trying to remember. Um, so Nisi was little. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I, I don't remember. Well, let's see. They were on Moral Road when I was at, when I was like two. Yeah. Uh, um, so they, they had moved there then. I just, I don't remember the sequence of events, whether they were in Norwood when, when mom and dad lived on Sunnyside or whether they didn't move until they were on Prospect Street. But, um, no, Grandpa loved to come and visit. Yeah. You know? And he could have a beer if he wanted. <laughs> we just he could what? Have a beer if he oh. wanted. Yeah. You know? He wasn't a big drinker, but occasionally he liked a beer, you know? Yeah. Pretty cup well, of coffee. I remember um, mom used to say that he wasn't cheap, but he would always buy the cheapest bear that was on sale. So he was always trying different types. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the other thing, too, is, you know, when you go from being affluent growing yeah. up, which yeah. they were, yeah. and then the depression hit and they lost pretty much everything. Um, now, now, Nana and Grandpa were married in 1915. So they'd been married for a while, and you know, I don't want to say live in the high life, but they weren't, they weren't suffering. You know? No, I rem I remember Mom saying that um, just before the depression hit, and she was just old enough to remember, he would take her on the train to go to New York just for lunch to meet yeah. clients. Sure. Um, yeah, I know he had his own business and was very successful. An interesting thing, though, is she also told me that um, there was one winter there where she, Nana, and Grandpa, or Grampy, would go down to the railroad tracks where the bend was to pick up coal. Yeah. Sex. I mean, that's how bad it was for them. You know? They, and, uh, they pretty much lost yeah. just yeah. about everything. When, when the stock market crashed, yeah, um, yeah it, 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 it did not go well for the Stavely family. Yeah. Now, you know, they managed to hang on to their house. Yes. Yeah. And they lived in a very nice house yeah. um, in West Roxbury. Um, you know, um, they had Mama in a private school. Sacred Heart Academy. No. 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 Beaver Country Day School. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was... Yeah. There was dollars involved there. Um, yeah. And, and after the, you know, when, when 
the market crash, there were a lot. Of, there were a lot less students yeah. there. Um, and you know, Mom said it was kind of a real shock to the system because then she was in with you know just the regular kids. Yeah, and they didn't have money, so it wasn't. Although it was hard on everybody during that period of time, um, kids that went, were from you know well-to-do families were suddenly uh, having to do without the things that they were used to. Yeah. Now, mom, plus you know, God love mama. She, there was she didn't she she never looked down on anybody. Yeah. Um. I mean, she'd get a little snooty sometimes, but she just, she was never <laughs> one to, she was never one to, yeah, she would say, oh, well, they're not very polished. And, uh, <laughs> and I just, I just chalked it up to the day school, the county, you know, the, 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 the country day school. Um, yeah. Where, you know, you had etiquette and you had, uh, um, elocution lessons and you had yeah. all this, you know, highfalutin stuff. Um, <laughs> well, too you much. Know. When, when she ever said, you know, cause she was working at Roach Brothers then. Yeah. And you know, Elvira was working there too. And Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Elvira was an Italian immigrant and oh my God, the mouth on that woman, but which, I thought, was, I, which I thought was hilarious. And, and was, poor mama's just like, <gasps> She's yeah. not very polished. Like, yeah, but she loves you to death, Mom. So, yeah, just yeah. go with the flow. Go with Elvira, the flow. She, I, I don't know if she's alive or not, but she was a, um, she was a wonderful person. She was. I, you know, I was, by that time, I was able to go down to Rose Brothers and stuff because Mom was working the snack bar and I would right. get lunch and stuff. Anyway, well, you know, it's interesting. Like you say, Mom came from a very affluent family where Dad, I mean, they didn't even know there was a depression because... Uh, they were poor. They had a farm, and George, or Beezy, as I used to call him, I guess, uh, you know, worked on the Boston Worcester train and bus line. Um, but you know, talking about um, Gamp, Gampy, as you call him, Grampy, uh, Grampy excuse me. Grampy. Uh, well, where? What's his background? Okay, uh, so. Um Grampy was uh, christened John Mayer, M A I R, Stavely. Mayer is a family name, as is Priestley. Um, so that's just when it when it comes up again, you will know they are family names, mm -hmm. and those names go uh, down the, the maternal line, not mm -hmm. the paternal one. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyway. Grampy was born in 1887 in New Britain, Hartford, Connecticut. His mother, Ada, um, was was British. She was born in England and um, was there most of her life until she met John Stabley, John Mayer Stabley Sr., um, and then they came to America. Yeah, we have a picture of those two. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, um. So uh, Grimpy, they eventually uh, ended up in Winthrop, Massachusetts, because um, I have I have uh, Grimpy living there in at the age of thirteen in the year nineteen hundred. Yeah. Um, but I think at that point Ada and John Mayer Senior uh, were divorced. Um, I I don't have a record for that. Hmm. So I may have to dig into that a little deeper. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not meaning to ignore you folks that are watching this, except for I've got two computers going, one of which is just the ancestry stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm cheating because my brains are gone. Future um, generations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, uh, Ada, Emily, Esther, Tolkien um, came. She was rich. The family was rich. She had plenty of money. And um, Grampy, uh, John Mayer Stabley Jr., yeah. um, his sister, Gladys Lillian Mayer Stabley, who I adored. Um, Aunt Gladys. <laughs> Aunt Gladys. Yeah. And um, 
she taught me how to sew, and I still miss that woman to this day. Sweet, mm-hmm. sweet yeah. woman. Um, and then there was uh, their brother Jim, or James, Uncle yep. Jimmy. Uh, yeah, and then they had their kids. Anyway, um, so they grew up in, uh, you know, eventually they were in Massachusetts. Um, and then when Grampy was 27, and that was 1915, he and Jenny Gardella got married. So that would have been Nana. Yeah. And then, interestingly, a couple of years later, uh, in 1918, which is the beginning of World War One. Yeah. Uh, it appears that Grampy got uh, drafted and uh, into the United States Navy as a chief petty officer. I don't. Uh, do you have the records on that? Yeah, I've got it right here. I- he was drafted because um, his war service certificate, right here. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. They didn't draft in the Navy. They did draft in the Army. And I found, and I forget where I found it. You got this. Yeah, you've got this. You got this. You've loaned it to me. Um, Oh, okay. He he was in the Massachusetts Naval Militia at some point. Now, um, yeah, so he he served um, six months. From July 15th, 1918 to January 25th, 1919. And he was at the USNTC Hingham, which is United States Naval Training Center um, in Hingham. But uh, he wasn't being trained there. He's uh, uh, Was he already an engineer by that time? Oh, yeah. 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 So he probably was brought in prior naval service in the uh, naval militia and then made a chief petty officer yeah. training or whatever. Also on the certificate where it says this certifies the John M. Stavely USN R something. I can't figure it out, the the handwriting. I want to say it's a V or an I, but he was in, like anybody who, uh, you're in the reserve, you're not a regular. So it was right. some kind of naval reserve unit. Um, so no, he wasn't drafted. He, he voluntarily went. Okay. Well, that sounds like something he would do. Well, the interesting thing is, and then again, and this is why this part of history, um, intrigues me. 20 years later, you have another world war. Yeah. And he is between the age of 45 Mm -hmm. and 65. And the government Mm -hmm. says you all have to register on this day. And he did. Mm-hmm. And um, this was, they weren't going to send him into combat, but they did want a pool of men who could administrate and, um, or uh, supervisors, leaders, stuff like that. Yes. That they could call upon if they needed to. This was 1942. This was, well, you know, at, I'm looking at his draft card. Which one? World War One or World War Two? World War Two, because yeah. I don't think I have anything for World War a, a card or anything for World War One. It is. It's to... on. It's on full three. I have to renew my membership. Okay. Um. Yeah. But yeah, at that point, he was working for Creamery Package yeah. Manufacturing Company. Um. Yeah. And and they did uh what they 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 did uh, refrigeration yeah design uh because yeah. free. The, the creamery part was for uh, dairies. Yep. So um, they did all the refrigeration and things like that. And that's what we did. Um, but what I found funny was I remember Nana telling me she would tell me some stuff. He was 54. Sto- yeah, 54. I know. Wow. He was right in the middle of that, the old man draft. They were, they were going to take him. It was. Um, I remember Nana telling me uh, among a number of stories one was the Boston Pops, where they had yeah. just gotten married, and they would wait outside when the doors opened, and they'd race upstairs to get into the, I forget, balcony? the balcony seats for a nickel, for, you know, one nickel, so they could listen to the Pops. But then she said, oh, yeah, when Grandpa would come home for leave, 
they kept mistaking him for a um, the the train conductor because of his uniform and the hat. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure he went right along with it. <laughs> you knew him, I didn't. But he had a wicked <laughs> sense of humor. He really did. He had a wicked <laughs> sense. Well, I've got that picture of him hanging up here where he's on. I guess that was in um, the apartment they had. I want to say one of those triple deckers in Dorchester or something, who God knows where, but he's on the back porch. And Roslindale. Was, Roslindale, okay. He's on the back porch, and you can see he's wearing the Navy boots that they issued at that time with Brogan's, and he's got the military haircut, but he's in civilian clothes, just smiling and happy. <laughs> yeah, he was a happy guy. Yeah, yeah. He was, um, just, he was just the nicest man. Really yeah. was. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. And when he passed away, yeah. um, it was a bad day in Dollar. I mean, really? the whole town oh, the whole town was just like, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He was that kind of a guy. He was mm. he 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 kind of he knew so many people. Yeah. And affected so many people. I mean, he touched a lot of lives. Um, so yeah, when when he passed away, it was uh, it was not a good day. And I'm trying to. I think Bishop Manhattan actually, um, and I'll have to double check, but I think uh, Bishop Minahan uh, actually did the funeral. Wow. I'll, I'll double check, but yeah, I mean, they were good friends. They were yeah. good friends. So. Now, when did he pass? Sixty two, sixty three. Uh, he passed on March 13th, 1963. I will never forget that date, ever, ever, ever. It was awful. Awful, well, awful. Actually, uh, Beasy, Dad's father, passed away the same year, didn't he? I think so. I think it was the next year. Yeah. Hmm. Um, all right. Now, there are a couple of stories you used to say. There was this commercial on TV in the 80s. And whenever it played, it always reminded you of Jack, Grandpa. Grampy. Okay, you're going to have to refresh my memory. No, honest to God, mush for brains now. Mush for brains. That's I, something I to cannot do with, remember. Something to do with dancing. <gasps> <laughs> yes. Oh, God, now I'm going to get all for clumped. Um When I was little, um, and of course, you know, we, we went to their house a lot because it was just yeah. up the street. Right. And um, Grandpa loved to dance, and so um, little little me uh, would stand on his feet, and he would dance me around. And he taught me how to dance. He taught <laughs> me how to waltz. And uh, which came in handy in later years, yeah. but um, yeah, it was like my favorite time. He he put on the record player, and because um, they had one of those um, entertainment centers where you know you put the 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 radio part was in the middle. Yeah. You had a place for your albums on the left hand side, and on the right hand side was where you put your liquor bottles. Yeah. It was a bar. Um, <laughs> it was an entertainment center. Yes. Um, but yeah, he, he would put, uh, you know, music on and, um, he taught me how to waltz. My favorite time, my favorite mm. time. One of my, one of my best memories of that was just, uh, so, uh, yeah. Christmas time, you would go shopping <laughs> in, Brain, in Braintree, Jordan Marsh. <laughs> no, is, it wasn't Braintree. <laughs> God, it, was, no. it was Jordan Marsh. Yeah, up in Framingham at oh. Shopper's World. Oh. I mean, it was it was a haul to get there. <laughs> yeah, but they were they were the only ones that had it. They had the whole <laughs> Santa's Village. Yeah. So Grandpa thought it would be a lot of fun to take his granddaughter. Yeah. You know, when I think back, thank God he didn't bring <laughs> Nisi because that would have been a holy show. It's the two of us screaming into the parking lot. So, um, yes. So Jordan Marsh set up this thing 
where they had you know the stanchions and the metal rails. Yeah. Um, so it looked you had to wind your way around. Yeah. Leash. Um, and <laughs> they put paper, like wrapping paper that looked like brick, yeah. on these things, so you couldn't like see through. Um, it just looked like you were walking in a village or whatever. <laughs> um, and which was yeah. fine. It was you know, it you know went to the charm of the whole thing. Um, so I'm I'm in line and Griff is like right there and because he did not let go and yeah uh, and that's important because I mean he had a firm grip on my hand yeah and um <laughs> she's listening yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey Dixie <laughs> and um so that was all well and good and then it was my turn. Yeah, and I wish I don't know how old I was, but old enough to not realize what the hell was going on. Yeah, and I get up to old Santa, and um, he did one of those oh, 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 and that did it for me. I screamed. <laughs> I I I flew out of Grandpa's hands. I busted through the paper wall. <laughs> made my way and of course grandpa couldn't follow me because he was a big tall man yeah. i was a little kid and i could go right through those you know <laughs> and uh, i made my way out into the parking lot now you can imagine he yeah. must have been absolutely frantic oh yeah and i just i just stood out in the parking lot and screamed you know, yeah that was you know he he, he made his way to me <laughs> But yeah, it was not a not a good time. We never did that again. We never uh, went to Santa's Village again. That was uh, not a good idea. And scarred, I, scarred for life, huh? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I'm not sure he told Mama. Um, I think he kind of left that to me, and I probably just came out with, "Yeah, Santa Claus scared me, and I don't want to do that anymore." And and he kind of left out the part because I remember telling Mama about that. <laughs> and she was like, what? You were in the parking lot? And probably why she, he didn't tell her that you know, her yeah. daughter, had, had, you know, her precious child, had escaped and was running around to the parking lot of Shoppers <laughs> World in Framingham. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back in the late 50s, it wasn't that dangerous. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We did not do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's almost Thanksgiving, so tell me something. There are a lot of pictures of Thanksgiving up at Nana and Grandpa's house. Yeah. Memories. Favorite memory of Thanksgiving up there? Um, a lot of food. Yeah. Um, I got to have some wine. <laughs> and Mom and Dad did not like that, but it was watered down. Yeah. You know? um, Nana... Know, uh, grew up in an Italian family, so the kid, you know, kids started on wine very young, and of course, yeah. it was watered down to absolutely nothing. But um, it was a whole idea. Yep. So, you know, mom didn't seem to have a problem with it. Dad, being a teetotaler, um, yeah, you know, he did. He he didn't think that that was necessary, but you know, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to start a problem. So, yeah. you know. Uh, but I remember that and thinking I was all all of that because I was having some wine <laughs> and uh, trying to remember. Uh, I, I don't recall what the conversations were. I mean, it was yeah. just, I mean, I can picture um, Grandpa was at the head of the table. Yeah. Uh, Nana would have been to his left. Yeah. I think mom was to his right and then dad was next. And then auntie was across from auntie Gladys. Was yep. across from him, and then Dee Dee was pro Aunt Dee Dee was probably there. Aunt Dee Dee. Yep. Um, you know, funny and, about and, her, and then us yeah. kids. Yeah. So, what's funny about Aunt Dee Dee? All I remember of her nice, nice woman, old gray hair and old lady glasses with nineteen twenty shoes and mm -hmm. nineteen twenty style dress. Uh -huh. She and Nan. I yep. mean, it's like <laughs> they grew older, but they kept the same. I mean, same style. I'm kind of the same way, I guess. Hey, yeah. um, what was the relationship like between Dad and Grampy? 
I know in the beginning. <laughs> it was rough in the beginning. <laughs> because, look, like I said, you know, uh, the, the Gardellas, the, you know, Nana's family um, knew, the, you know, Daddy's family. Yeah. And, you know, once once Nana and Grampy got married, they lived um, in Natick for a short period of time. Yeah. So when Daddy came around um, and and <laughs> they started dating, Mom and Dad, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Dad, you know, being an honorable man, asked yeah. for Mom's hand in marriage. And uh, Grandpa's reply was, you couldn't keep her in stockings. That's the um, famous line of the story, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And um, Mom said, With that did not set well. Yeah, especially when he waved his finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, that did not set well with dad and dad spent um the the few years uh in between, you know, um he went back to school. Yeah. You know, he got out of the Coast Guard. He went back to school. I forget who he was working for at that time. Um I think it was in sales of some sort. And then um you know, he just kept improving himself and um yeah the, the time came when he could uh afford to get mom many pairs of stockings <laughs> many many pairs of stockings um and they i think they got to uh they got to be friends i think yeah. you know I, I again i was i was eight when yeah. uh, grandpa passed away and i didn't see a lot of interaction between the two mm -hmm. because you know i'd be out playing a yeah. Lot. So, you know, holidays and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just remember when uh, dad would bring me up there to put the storm windows up, take the storm <laughs> windows down, <laughs> fix the fence. And yeah. I, I forget how, but he said, Oh, yeah, I, I, I do this. I mean, so I think he did it while Jack was still alive, also, you know, to help. Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah, <laughs> those yeah. damn storm windows oh my God. screwed in, and there were no power screwdrivers. Nope. There was either the bit and brace, or it was a handheld. Yeah. Thing that you plunge in. I, you know, I don't know what it's called. And yeah. oh my God, there were like twenty windows on that damn house. There were a lot of windows. Yeah. There were a lot of screws. Yeah, a lot of screws. And yeah, I I have to laugh whenever you see on Facebook every once in a while. There's nothing you can do to me to scare me. I used to hold the flashlight for my father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember a few of those times I dropped a screw. Or I didn't oh, hold the flashlight, right? <laughs> you know, when when a fuse would blow. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, I I would. You know, he would say to me, he would he would never ask mom. Yeah. I should that should have been a tip off. But he'd say, yeah. Come on downstairs, we gotta change a fuse. <laughs> and my and my mother would say, Bob, be careful. And so I go downstairs with daddy and he'd pop open the fuse box because yeah. we had you know, we had the fuses, yeah. the little round things, no circuit breakers back then. Yeah. And he would hand me a hockey stick. Yeah. And he's yeah. His words to me, I would go down all innocent, you know, <laughs> like doodly do. I'm going to help daddy. And he yeah. would hand me a hockey stick. And he said, now, if I start bouncing, if I start <laughs> bouncing around, you, you take the hockey stick and you hit my arms down. Yeah. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> Use the hockey stick to hit my arms down. And I remember saying why. And he said, I'll tell you in a minute. And <laughs> And of course, yeah. you know, it, it, it would be the successful, you know, transfer of old fuse to new fuse. Yeah. But, uh, when I found out what he was talking about, I was totally freaked out. It's like, oh my God, he was going to be electrocuted. Then, you know, and after he passed away, yeah. you know, a fuse would blow. I'd have to go downstairs and change up the damn fuse. And I remember one of the fuse that blew when I took the fuse out. There was yeah. actually a penny in there. So you can only imagine how overloaded that circuit was if it blew with the penny. So, well, yeah. I didn't do it because I knew better. <laughs> but that was an old trick. Put a penny in 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, that's what and he told me. He told me, don't ever do that. And there he is. He's he's, you know, off flying with the angels. And I go and I pull out the thing and I'm like, Oh my god. So I wonder the house didn't go up in flames. He was famous for do as I say, not as I do. Oh, yeah. Um oh, yeah. interesting thing. I remember going up there once, there was a problem. Uh at Nana's, this is long after, obviously. Yeah. Um, Grampy died. And I went up with him, and he was throwing, I think it was something with the, the fuses because he was throwing switches. And he was oh, telling yeah. me, okay, put this one on, off, yeah. this one on. Well, there was a red switch that we never touched. Yeah. And it was right by the uh, cellar door. Yeah. And that red switch was for the, uh, <laughs> the oil eater. Yeah. <laughs> it's winter time. Yeah. I 220 making... volts, my friend. No, it's just a red 20. it's a red switch, like a light switch. Yeah. We didn't even touch that, and that was what I said. Well, I think I should shut this off. Middle of winter. Oh, Billy. I, oh. I, 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 I shut the switch off. It was just like a light switch. You know, you weren't in danger. Right. But he was testing the other fuses and right. um he figured out what it was, fixed it. And I saw this as we're leaving, and I said, oh, I better shut this off. Middle of winter. <laughs> Mom gets a call. Can you send Bob up? I have no heat. <laughs> I think I almost killed Nana. <laughs> oh, my God. I vaguely remember him saying, William, yeah. did you touch this? <laughs> No, <laughs> William, I might have. <laughs> okay. Don't oh, my God. That again. <laughs> and I think the funny thing is, oh my God. I'm up there fixing the stove for Nana. I'm like 17 or something, and the element burnt out. So, go down, take the fuse out. Looking at the red, I still would not touch that red switch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the red switch. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we got sidetracked. So there's nothing really memorable that stands out on Thanksgiving. No, just yeah. you know, a lot of food. All yeah. most of which I hated. Yeah. Um, you know, Jen would make her mustacholis, which is yeah. a type of pasta, um, and her. Or like world famous sauce, yeah, and uh, yeah, it took three days of simmering on the stove. I mean, it was a project, and I yeah. thought it was okay, but um, I was not one who like would not over it like everybody else. I'm just a rotten child. What can I say? Nah. So, uh, you know, I uh, yeah. It well, was, that's uh, inter interesting because whenever we have Nana over for Sunday dinner. Mm -hmm. Two things I remember. Dad would cut the corn off the cob so she could eat it. Yep. And now I personally know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, we had to have a pasta dish, mustard cholis. Yeah. It took me years. And I'm talking decades. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until Debbie and I got together. Yeah. Within the last 10 years that I uh, would eat spaghetti. She said she wanted to try it. And I said, yeah, as long as we have meatballs, I'll, I'll be okay. So she made a sauce. It tasted just like Nana's. <laughs> I do have the recipe for yeah. Nana's. I know. Denise followed her around one day because Nana would not we give sent up. Her, yeah, no, we <laughs> sent her up there as a spy. <laughs> because, well, they knew they couldn't send me because, yeah. you know, I would just stand there and demand that she give me the recipe. Yeah. Whereas Nisi was was um she was sneaky so yeah, she, she was she was nana's favorite yes yeah, she was <laughs> yes because yeah because um she she didn't give nana any lip and i did yeah you know even at that point i was an argumentative child or not argumentative i just um i had opinions yeah and i you know even at that age i was well read Mm -hmm. And I understood things. So, <laughs> yeah. So when, um, and Nana had her ways. So, um, yeah, yeah. We, we had to send, we had to send Nisi up because we knew that Nana and, you know, Nisi would just, she'd, she'd be able to 
get the recipe, which she did. We were so proud of Anissa, honest to God. Yeah. She got the high fives and, and everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And when she passed away, when, when Nana passed away, yeah, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a big thing about, Oh no, you know, um, Jenny's gone and there goes her recipe for her sauce. And we all just started laughing and it was like, what? We have the recipe. And oh, the hazes. Me. Yeah. We, we Margie. had the recipe. Mm -hmm. Her, be had her the best recipe. friend, Margie. Yeah. And uh, they had like eight kids or something. It was but Margie they, and Pauline and yeah. um, and Frida and oh yeah and Uncle David. David. Oh David yeah, David was the one that loved and Mina. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and but, so um, yeah, we yeah. gave them the recipe. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is this is a gift from Jen, and they were just like <laughs> over the moon. Yeah, Uncle David. Was, when we would go down for cookouts for his Memorial Day cookouts, yeah. did you bring the mustacholis? Yes, yeah. we did. Yep, yeah. who's got the musties? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and mommy used to say, "Oh, she's probably fuming up there." I was like, "Well, you know." Yeah. All yeah, right, we're these up. are people. People, you know, people loved yeah. her musties, and you know, their family. So we'll just give it to them. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Okay, time's running out in the meeting. Um, we got nine we'll minutes remaining. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, now, on Nana's side, yeah, um, she. How did they meet? How did Jack and Nana meet? Um, well, she was working in her family's produce department, produce shop. Yeah. So um, they met there because apparently Grandpa went in there. Huh. Uh, I, I want to say. Yeah, because the, the the downtown, I know that there had been a couple of fires. So I, I, I can't remember, you know, where her family's uh, business was in that whole thing, whether they were still like the big shop or yeah. whether they were rebuilding or whatever. But in any event, he would go in and, you know, Dana was a pretty young woman. Yeah. And um, I guess they got to talking and he liked what he saw and he liked her personality because <laughs> Nana was very funny. She really was. Yeah. Um, and she had a hell of a laugh. So, um, you know, Grip appreciated that. And Nana was smart. We didn't, you know, I look back, we did not give her credit. She was a very smart woman, having only had a fourth grade education. Yeah, but you got to remember, it's a different era where. Um, well, I understand that. Was not but, a, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fourth grade. I mean, that means that she. What's fourth grade? Ten. Uh, ten? Yeah, yeah, ten. Yeah. So her education stopped when she was ten years old, and she was self-taught the rest of the way, yeah. um, because she understood finances. Yeah. She was. She understood the news. She understood politics. I mean, she was. She was a smart woman for a woman who had uh, very little formal education. So yeah. good on her. No. One thing I, I regret that I never talked to her about was the Sacco and Vanzetti issue yeah. in Boston. Yeah. Um, you know, the Italian immigrants who uh, were um, anarchists. Yeah. And that was bad. Yeah, it was bad. Um, you know, I've looked, being a historian, you know, I've looked at that. And um, even though Governor Mike Dukakis, pardoned them and declared a day Sacco and Vanzetti day. Certain things in the case were wrong. The judge was already predisposed to uh, convict him. So right. the whole truth didn't come out. They never got a fair trial. But yeah. I, the one thing I regret is I never got a chance when I was in high school to talk to her about that. I never bothered. Even though I knew she was Italian Right. And and such. I just again that was stupid me. But we've all say that. I wish I had done this. Yeah, I mean well, well Bill, I mean as years go by, we, we look back and it's kind of like, Oh, if I had had the opportunity, but <laughs> you know, we may have had the opportunity, but we just didn't do it because we were having lives of our own. Oh, I know. I know that. So yeah. 
you know, and, and it's hard because don't think I don't beat myself up for, right. for the questions not asked. Well, that's why I'm doing this now that it's, it's on the record. Yeah. There's a visual. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they meet and, um, you know, I, I see some of the older pictures of them when they were younger. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the, the dress, everything. I mean, just looking at their dress, that must have been so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and let me tell you something, Bubba. It's still uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I am a woman of a certain age now, and I don't give a who <laughs> are. Um, so okay. I, I, I'm just as comfortable as I can possibly be. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, there there were decades of my life where I was cinched up, pulled up, pulled yeah. up. You know, you just in, in layers of clothing. And, you know, God forbid you go outside and, you know, anything yeah. shows. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway. And, and wearing um, those long dresses and corsets and all that. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, no. What I, and I'm, I'm jumping here now. But um, what I found interesting when we're talking about how they Jack and Jen lost everything in yeah. the uh, Depression. Well, we had a conversation in 2008 at the height when it was pretty bad. Yeah, the great. They called it the Great Recession. I said, uh, "Bull hockey. We're in the depression because we right. are at a quarter of the uh, population yeah. is unemployed." Yeah, and the reason why I mention this to you is on my way home from work that day, I saw a guy in a business suit standing at the off ramp of um, the highway as I was leaving school. Yeah, holding a sign, getting money. And mm -hmm. then I, yeah, I said, yeah, we're not getting the full truth. But we talked about that day, that night, maybe, or maybe a couple of days later. And I said, do you realize we have more in common with our grandparents than we do with our parents? Yeah. Because, you know, so I kind of got a feeling of what it was like for them because it was just kind of a scary time. Well, in as you recall, yeah. Jay and I both yeah. worked for builders. Yeah. And the whole thing collapsed mm -hmm. and yeah. we were in Florida. Yeah. So that was that was the worst case scenario. Yeah. They were, we we no longer had a place to go to work. Yeah, you know, I was lucky our, being being a public school teacher. Yeah, it was still, it was very bad. Well, we ended up income. moving to New Mexico. Yeah, because there was no work here for us yeah. in Florida. It was very bad. And then when we got out to New Mexico, thinking everything was going to be okay, we lasted eleven months, and then that business went out yeah. because it was peripherally attached to the the building industry yeah. um it was awful we had dear friends that lost their businesses their mm -hmm. homes their cars i mean yeah. it was it was very bad very very bad yeah i know and that's why i say we have more in common with what they yeah. went through in in the uh, yeah. 30s um than what mom and dad i mean they were just kids they were teenagers yeah they, they were actually they were 10 10 and they you know by the time the depression was over that was world war ii and then they were young adults but um so that i found that interesting from a historic standpoint well i'll tell you something because, it was a very scary time for jay and i yeah because well, we spent we spent let's see, i'm trying to think how long i was able to get a job um because we moved to texas yeah because um it turned out that new mexico was killing me um, yeah. because because of the desert and the dust and the asthma yeah. and everything else so we got back to uh texas and it only took me a couple of weeks to find a job in retail because yeah, yeah i'm one of those i can just work anywhere it doesn't yeah. matter um but jay was you know he was he was in the the building industry and yeah. that's what he knew and he had a good reputation um but you know trying to break into a whole new state. Yeah. Um, and Texas, you know, th there were jobs in, in, in Texas. It just took, I think it took six months for him to find one. Yeah. It was very hard, very hard. Um, I know. Well, anyways, we, we got to wrap this up. We're down to like a minute and a, a half. Minute. Um, yeah. It was just amazing. You know, you stu we studied this in high school and oh, it never happened again. And the next thing you know, happening. Um, I'm 58. I'm going, geez, okay, this isn't good. Yeah. You know, you were almost six. Okay. Anyways, um, 
No, 48. So you were 52 or something. All right. Uh, next up, we'll go on uh, Jen's side. Talk okay. about the Gardellas and Didi. <laughs> she She's the riot. only one I remember. She's the only one I remember. Yeah, she has a riot. All right. All right. Well, I love you. I love you. Let's see how this works.